from McCaskey High School here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Tri-State Media is proud to present continuing coverage of the 1999 basketball season. Tonight, the McCaskey Red Tornado hosts the Comets of Penn Manor High School. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to McCaskey High School. Ken Phelps joined by Bill Arnold. In a last-minute scheduling change, we're here at McCaskey High School, and uh, we had the unfortunate news today. We had received a telephone call from Lancaster Catholic Athletic Director Terry Klug. The game between Lancaster Catholic and Lebanon Catholic at Lancaster Catholic High School, a doubleheader with the boys and girls, was canceled this evening due to a tragedy at Lebanon Catholic High School. A member of the student body passed away today suffering from an illness, and unfortunately, Bill, we, uh, we're looking forward to that game, and it got canceled. They're going to try and make that game up next Wednesday, and it, it would have been a good one. We're looking at Section 3 bragging rights right there. Oh, absolutely. We were very much looking forward to being over at Lancaster Catholic, but we're excited to be here at McCaskey, where the Red Tornado have a very quick and exciting team, and they're playing a young Penn Manor Comet team still trying to find itself, Ken, under their first-year coach, Ayersman. Should be a very good basketball game. The McCaskey Red Tornado, Bill, a, a little bit unusual, and you've seen them for, for many, many years. This is one of the smaller teams that they've had here at McCaskey High School, but one thing we were talking with Athletic Director Steve Polonis earlier, he said this may be the quickest team they've ever had, and that is some statement to make. That is some statement. Quickest team they've ever had, as usual. The Tornado have played a very difficult non-league schedule. They're 7-4, and four, but they've lost to teams like Coatesville, Chester, Westchester East, and Reading, and some of those games were very close. These are uh, teams ranked in the state, ranked very high. McCaskey has won four out of their last five. They are undefeated in the league, and very frankly, they are expected to win this game against the Comets on their home floor tonight. The name to watch, and there's a lot of names, as McCaskey uh, throws a, a lot of quickness and a lot of talent at you, the name to really be on the lookout for tonight is Jerry Johnson, the junior guard. Uh, what a fine player he is, some think the best shooting guard in the county. And the scary thing is he's only a junior. Only a junior. After this season, he'll be back for one more year. McCaskey, a very good team, currently tied for first place in Section 1 of the Lancaster Lebanon League. 3-0 and in the league, trying to maintain that perch atop Section 1. Penn Manor, on the other hand, 1-2, and two, but building a program that John Arisman in his first year is coming in, and, and he's excited. And I, t I spoke with him before the game, even before you arrived. This was very early. <laughs> and, and you could see just kind of a, a twinkle in his eye. He was excited about what's going on. Coming in in his first year, lost four starters, and the fifth starter transferred out. But he's basically been able to come in and instill his own offense. Oh, he has, and, and they played very, very well just the other night in a, a tough loss to Hempfield. We all know what kind of squad Warren Goodling has, and this Penn Manor team was in a four-point ball game down to the wire against the Hempfield Black Knights. So McCaskey must guard against that old nemesis uh, complacency. You don't want to overlook this Penn Manor team and give them a chance to hang in the ball game. You can bet Coach Powell, the veteran coach that he is, will have his tornadoes going at Penn Manor early, and uh, he wants to get on top and just uh, try to squash them quickly. Don't let this young team hang in there. And they're really going to have to avoid looking ahead. We spoke earlier about McCaskey's upcoming schedule, and the next three games are not the most difficult games McCaskey will play all year, but they are very tough games. Any game in the Lancaster Lebanon League is. But you look, they play Warwick here at home in their next game. The game after that, they go at Mannheim Township. And we've seen Mannheim Township already take it to Hempfield at Hempfield. So on Mannheim Township's home floor, that will be a very tough game. And then, of course, the uh, the big duel with Hempfield, McCaskey and Hempfield, where we will televise that game as well. And that, I guarantee, is a show do, showdown we're looking forward to. But I know Steve Powell is trying to keep his guys from looking forward to it. Well, that game's a week from Tuesday. But as uh, you mentioned, we don't uh, want to look ahead to that game as yet because there's a lot of exciting basketball in Tri-State Media. And it starts right now with this key Section 1 battle tonight between McCaskey and the Penn Manor Comets. You mentioned size. Lost is Kevin Handy. Lost is Chris Wilson. This team was big last year as it went into the state playoffs and won the first uh, round state playoff game a year ago, did the Tornado under Coach Powell. But all that size is gone, and they rely on great quickness and great shooting. You mentioned Chris Wilson, the, the football standout playing out at Division I Pittsburgh. 
Kevin Handy up at Kutz down playing basketball, doing extremely well, has been a PSAC Rookie of the Week for the Golden Bears. Uh, I know at least one time, and I believe multiple times. So they are really having to switch their game up a little bit. They don't have the big guy in the post that they can go to. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups, and we're just moments away from the opening tip here at McCaskey High School. Should be a good one. Section 1 battle between Penn Manor and McCaskey coming up very shortly here on TSM. We are back at McCaskey High School. Bill Arnold, Ken Phelps on Tri-State Media. Section 1 battle between the McCaskey Red Tornado and the Comets from Penn Manor. We mentioned that Penn Manor, actually we mentioned that McCaskey is 7-4 and four overall, undefeated in the league. The Comets, on the other hand, 3-8 and eight overall, Kenny. They've won one league game, that a victory over Solanco a week or so ago. But don't forget, they did play these Hempfield Knights very tough just a few days ago. Well, the Penn Manor Comets, you mentioned their wins. They've got two wins in the Lancaster Lebanon League, only one in actual league play, but they beat Solanco and they beat Cocalico. Those teams, unfortunately, for John Arisman and his club, represent the bottom of their respective sections. So while it is always good for them to get wins, and you've got to teach your guys how to win, and winning, of course, every coach will tell you is contagious you got to look at that competition a little bit and think, well, they've certainly not running in, not run into a team the caliber of McCaskey, and this, this will be a good measuring stick for John Ayersman's club tonight. I know he'll walk out of the gym deal feeling like, hey, they got a pretty good idea of where they stand now among Section 1. Well, lineups are being introduced now to a pretty good crowd here at McCaskey. Of course, the Penn Manor Comets in their blue and gold uniforms will primarily be uh, going with uh, some fellows by the name of Martin and Wagner. You'll hear those names a lot. Uh, Kenny's going to tell you a little bit more about that. Anthony Reynolds plays a key part for Coach Ayersman as well. And now the McCaskey Red Tornado, as you get a good look at the Comets in their pregame huddle. The McCaskey Red Tornado, very small, with Jerry Johnson at 5'11", Tyron McFadden at 5'9", Bobby Eberhardt at only six foot tall Tyson McFadden who's actually listed as a forward at 5'11 how about this size and then their big man <laughs> sophomore Perry Patterson is all of six foot two that is a very small red tornado team it's but where they make up with it in quickness yeah they very much so do it's a very very interesting storyline here tonight there are family relations all over the place. In McCaskey, you've got a pair of McFaddens, two sets of brothers on the Penn Manor Comets, and I'm sure that's uh, certainly unusual in high school basketball anywhere, but to have them in the same league, the same team to be playing, you've got for uh, Penn Manor, Joel and Shane Rainier, and Ron and Rick Wagner. So you look at that, and it's going to be very interesting. A family affair here at McCaskey High School tonight. We'll take a quick timeout for the national anthem. We come back with the opening tip in just a moment. And welcome back to McCaskey High School for this Section 1 Lancaster Lebanon League showdown between Penn Manor and the McCaskey Red Tornado. There's a look at the Penn Manor starters. The two guards, Corey Martin and Anthony Reynolds, Brad Steigelman, Kyle Bear, the forwards, Rick Wagner, the center for the Comets, and for McCaskey, Tyron McFadden and Jerry Johnson, the guards, and a three-forward lineup, Bobby Eberhardt, Tyson McFadden, and Perry Patterson. And we're underway, McCaskey controlling the opening tip. Right away, Penn Manor starts off in a man-to-man, -man, and that's going to be a tough assignment for the Comets, staying with a quick McCaskey Red Tornado. McFadden misses that first shot. Tyron McFadden running the offense, penetrated on that last drive to the basket and couldn't get it to go, but got the rebound. Jerry Johnson, a 14-footer, off the rim, touched all parts of it and no good. The ball goes out of bounds. Off McCaskey to Penn Manor. Well, McFadden misses one, and uh, Johnson misses one, and here comes the press. You know that John Ayersman realizes it's coming. Uh, this team caused Parkland to turn it over 27 times with their great uh, defense and press. So Penn Manor will have their work cut out for them, beating the Tornado quickness. There's a travel. Anthony Reynolds called for the turnover. And there's one. Already, you just meant you just mentioned 27 turnovers, and Bill, they made you look good. <laughs> well, I know uh, Coach Harrisman would hope that that's the one and only one, but I have a feeling there'll be a few more coming anyway. 
McCaskey works it down low, driving to the basket, no good on the shot. Tyson McFadden. Now Corey Martin bringing it up, tipped away by Tyron McFadden. He goes up for the easy lay in the finger roll, and there's our first points of the basketball game. The lay in by McFadden, it's 2 nothing. There's a foul at the other end on the drive by the Comets. A foul called on Tyron McFadden. First foul of the ball game, first team foul for McCaskey. Anthony Reynolds at the line and misses the first one. Second shot is good. And the Comets cut the lead in half. Now 2-1. to one. 6.47 remaining here in the first quarter of action. McFadden drives the baseline. Has it blocked from behind by Brad Steigelman. Here's Corey Martin on the run. Pass down to Reynolds on the baseline. Turnaround. Jump shot is off the rim. No good. Rebound comes down to Steigelman. And he gets called for the offensive foul. Going over the back for the rebound. Penn Manor does have the height advantage, but of course, as most of you know, rebounding is not always how tall you are. Positioning and quickness has a lot to do with uh, who uh, wins the rebounding edge. And right there, the position to McCaskey. Johnson out top, over on the left wing now. They try to go down low, foul, and the basket counted. Good for Tyson McFadden. His first points of the game, an opportunity to convert a three-point play. You look at the strong move by Tyson McFadden. He's only 5'11", but uh, he had that inside position, and not much that could uh, happen right there except a reach-in foul by Kyle Bear. Good strong finish by the 5'11", senior forward, and he converts. It's now 5-1, McCaskey. McFadden with three points on the night. Reynolds, the inbounds pass. Brings it across the timeline. Drives right down the lane, has it stolen. Penn Manor almost got it back, tried to get it out of the hands of Tyson McFadden. He goes right down the lane, up and under, but can't get it to roll. Rebound to Kyle Bear. Corey Martin will slow things down a little bit for the Comets offense. Almost a steal, driving down the lane, Rick Wagner. And this time the Comets do turn it over. That's their third of the game. In less than three minutes, not good news for Coach Ayersman. There's an air ball. Jump shot from two point, had a foot on the line, Jerry Johnson. Third and fourth points of the game and would have had third, fourth and fifth, but for a toe on the line. And we got a timeout called on the floor by Penn Manor, a 20 second timeout. And John Ayersman wants to talk things over. His team trailing 7-1 to one with 5.17 left in the first quarter. Talking with him before the game, he said, basically, as far as offense goes, they'll take what the other team gives them. And he wasn't really sure what McCaskey would give them on offense. He said, if they, you know, they like to run with teams, his team likes to set up their shots off a pass and get somebody open. But he said, you know, they're not going to be able to really run with McCaskey and take that game to them because they are so athletic and so quick. Martin up top, setting up the offense, now dribbling right side and has it stolen by Tyson McFadden. Two on one, nice behind the back dribble. A correction, that's Perry Patterson with the steal and bringing it down, and he's got his first two points of the night, and it's a 9-1 McCaskey lead. Perry Patterson, the, the backup quarterback this year in the McCaskey football team, great hands and a great dribbler for a big man, and you saw a little bit of it right there with that behind the back move. Another turnover, Ken. And a three-on-one break, nearly threw it away. McFadden able to corral it. Out top, Johnson for three. Off the back of the rim, no good. Long rebound out to Reynolds, and he's pushing it up the floor. Wow, gets the circus lay into roll, and he's got all of Penn Manor's points so far, but it's just three in this game. They've cut the lead to six. Bobby Eberhardt out top, first time we've called his name tonight. Out in the corner to Patterson. Patterson's going to pull it up. 
And that was long and almost didn't get any rim. I can't imagine Coach Powell is real happy about the last two shots by McCaskey. First the long three. There's a nice turnaround by the Comets. First the long three by Jerry Johnson. And then that long uh, baseline shot by Patterson. Not good percentage shots for the Tornado. And the Comets are right back in the game. And there's a timeout. I think the talk about shot selection. A 20-second timeout call by McCaskey. We'll credit Brad Steigelman with that nice turnaround jump shot. And the big guy showing a uh, nice soft touch on that turnaround jumper. And very quickly, John Arisman's club has climbed back into this one. After trailing 9-1, to one, they're now just a four-point ball game. And I think perhaps he's emphasizing to his team, hey, you know, don't let them take this game to you. As you get another look at the shot by Anthony Reynolds, and not the highest percentage of shots, but able to get it to go. That cut the lead to 9-3, to three, and we're... Now sitting at 9-5 to five in favor of the Red Tornado. And they control the basketball. Top of Everhart, now to Patterson on the right wing. Moved down and low, and another good, strong finish to the basket by Tyson McFadden. His fifth points of the night, and a chance to make it six as he'll go to the free throw line. Well, good look by Perry Patterson, who found Tyson McFadden down low. Look at this move now by Tyson as he gets around Bear. Kyle has to reach over and commit the foul and a chance for another three-point play for the 5'11 senior Tyson McFadden. Can't Missed get it. it to go, but the rebound off McCaskey. Ball out of bounds to Penn Manor. Wagner gets it into Corey Martin, and we've got a foul call. And a too much contact there by Jerry Johnson. Gets called for his first foul of the game. That is the second team foul for the Red Tornado, and Penn Manor will take the ball out of bounds on the far side. Eleven to five, your score here. 3.20 left in the first quarter. Ball goes out of bounds, but it's still Penn Manor basketball. Pass inbounds to the big man, Steigelman. Nice, soft touch, the one-handed jump shot. They're trying to take advantage of Steigelman's 6'6 size. By far the largest player on the floor, and the Comets are going to go to him, and he's responded. Steigelman matched up with Perry Patterson, and he's got two inches on him. And there's a McCaskey turnover, and the Comets with a chance to cut the lead to two or one if they can knock down a three-pointer. Those bounce passes, you want to come right up to the chest of the, your teammate. That bounce pass never got above uh, the shoe tops of the Tornadoes. Corey Martin pushing it up out of, out of control, and the rebound will come down to McCaskey, and they'll push it up the floor. Johnson over to Tyron McFadden, now to Patterson on the right wing. Patterson going to drive, the finger roll loses control, comes right down to Tyson McFadden, but it goes off the foot of Corey Martin and out of bounds, McCaskey basketball. Well, I want to tell you, Ronnie Wagner is sticking with Jerry Johnson like glue. There goes Jerry to inbound the ball, and Ron Wagner is right in front of him. And he is way out beyond the three-point line where Jerry likes to play. Here's a design play, but good defense by Wagner. Good look down low and a nice shot by Bobby Eberhardt. His first two points of the game and the lead is again six. Ken Phelps and Bill Arnold with you from McCaskey High School for the Section 1 contest in the Lancaster Lebanon League. They go down into Steigelman. He's back out top. Jump shot, 14-footer off the back of the rim. No good. McCaskey basketball out of bounds. Tyron McFadden out top, setting up the McCaskey offense. Out on the right wing, right wing. Pull up jump shot is good for Bobby Everhart. So he quickly has two field goals and four points on the night. And McCaskey has tied their largest lead of the game at eight. And we've got another turnover. And I tell you what, with a minute 41 left in the first quarter, Bill, Penn Manor very much in danger of reaching double digits in turnover before we reach the end of the first quarter. 
Well, just exactly what Coach Ayersman feared and, feared, and that is trouble with the McCaskey press and with the McCaskey quickness, and turnovers are mounting. Here's Jerry Johnson from downtown. Patterson with a shot up underneath, but can't get it to fall, but he will go to the free throw line. Foul on Penn Manor is going to be called on Rick Wagner. That is his first. And the team's fourth foul. You can see the hack on the arm as Perry Patterson pounded the offensive boards. He is only a sophomore at six to two and a half. Depends on who you talk to. Some say 6'3", some say 6'2". So we'll split the difference on Perry. <laughs> he showed some promise in a couple of McCaskey football games we did this year. And just a uh, sophomore. Will be around for a couple of years. Resetting the offense now. and Jerry Johnson looking for the open shot and not getting it. Drive down the lane out of control and no good. Tyron McFadden, and now here comes Penn Manor the other direction. Loose ball down to Kyle Bear, tipped away and out of bounds by McCaskey. So the Comets maintain possession. I got to say this, you would think you would not want to, to play at McCaskey's tempo, as you mentioned earlier, but Penn Manor's running right with the Red Tornado, and they're still in the game, down by only eight. Corey Martin off the inbounds pass, no good. The ball saved by McCaskey. Erisman wanted it out of bounds, and they didn't get it. The layup missed. Block shot, and the loose ball comes down to Kyle Bear. So I'm sure uh, each side getting a little bit of questionable officiating there, but it all evens out. 15-7, McCaskey out in front. Drive down the baseline, and we've got a foul called on the drive. And if that's on Jerry Johnson, that's his second. And that's a problem. That is indeed number 12, second foul of the game. And he has come out of the game to take a break. He'll be spelled by Anthony Gibson, six-foot junior guard. Well, Jerry Johnson, the leading scorer on this team, uh, is definitely the, the key threat from the outside. And now he's got two fouls in the first quarter. The steal by Penn Manor. They get another turnover. 35 seconds left. Reynolds, a turnaround. Can't get it to go. Steigelman right there. And he can't get his shot to fall. McCaskey's got a man down court if they can get it to Tyson McFadden, and they do. And he's blocked, but I think they're going to call a foul with the body on Corey Martin. Good defense that time, and I think he got all ball with the hand, but there may have been some contact underneath. Tyson McFadden has been living down low. He's got uh, five points to lead the Tornado, and there's another look at him. And you're right, all ball with the hand, but got him with the body. Tyson McFadden will go back to the line where he is one for two on the evening. Off the front of the rim, no good on the first one. Make it one for three, trying to get back to 50%, knock down the second one. McCaskey is a team here in this first quarter, Kenny. One for four from the free throw line. Obviously not a very impressive foul shooting effort thus far. Good on the back end, though he's two for four from the line tonight. And McFadden, Tyson McFadden with six points for Penn Manor. Rick Wagner has taken a seat on the bench. Neil Walk has come in in his favor. And another turnover, McCaskey on the run. Tyson McFadden now up and off the glass. It's good. Less than 10 seconds now. Penn Manor trying to get it up the floor to get another shot off. Corey Martin looking for a man, brings it up, has a good look at a three, and can't get it to go. Well, I tell you what, in the last two minutes of this quarter, the McCaskey Red Tornado certainly took it to Penn Manor, opening up an 11-point lead after eight minutes of action here at McCaskey High School. We'll be right back. Start of the second quarter here at McCaskey High School. Ken Phelps and Bill Arnold with you for Penn Manor versus the Red Tornado. And right now, Bill McCaskey taking control of this game, opening up an 11-point lead in the waning minutes of the first quarter. Well, Tyson McFadden has been the big key. He's got eight points for the Tornado, and most of them down low, working real hard under those boards. Steigelman a loose ball. Three-point shot by Penn Manor. No good. Rebound McCaskey. It comes down to Bobby Eberhardt. 
Find a man cutting, and we're going to get an offensive foul called. Foul called on Anthony Gibson. That is his first, team fourth. And I tell you, Brad Steigelman hit the deck pretty hard there and was holding the back of his head, but he appears to be all right. Martin brings it up, trying to avoid the trap. Penn Manor, a good job handling the pressure, but the ball gets tipped up and they create another turnover to the Red Tornado. Bounce pass, a nice strong finish by Bobby Everhart. He's got six tonight. And it is a 13-point game for McCaskey. No look pass down low and a nice conversion on the basket for Penn Manor, Neil Walk. His first points of the night. Just the third Comet in the scoring column. They've got nine. McCaskey down the lane. Shot is no good. We've got a foul call. I believe that's going to be on Anthony Gibson as well. He missed the shot running down the lane. That will be his second. Here's another look at the battle under the boards and number 21, Anthony Gibson reaching in there. Got a little bit too much body. And it looks like the shooting guards for McCaskey getting in foul trouble. That's two on Gibson and Jerry Johnson's on the bench with two. Anthony Reynolds trying to bring it up and it's tipped and another turnover. Reynolds trying to dribble through that pressure and that's tough. Bringing the ball up against McCaskey is an absolute uh, nightmare. It's a challenge. And uh, Penn Manor having all kinds of problems as most teams have had so far this year. Tyron McFadden running the point. Mark Keller into the game, the starting quarterback for the football team, misses the three-point shot. 20 to nine, your score. McCaskey out in front of this one and in control to this point, creating a number of turnovers here in the first half. Jump shot, good defense by McCaskey, and Perry Patterson pulls down the board. Running out, Tyron McFadden corrals it and gets the easy lay-in for his first two points of the night. 22 to nine, your score with 6-10 left here in the first quarter. McCaskey, a tremendous amount of pressure. They beat it this time, but Perry Patterson creates another turnover, gets it from Kyle Bear. Now Steigelman comes up with a loose ball. Bear up underneath, but misses the layup. Layup off the glass, rebound Perry. Patterson can't get it to go. Another shot blocked by Steigelman. Loose ball, he saves it to Corey Martin. Martin drives down the lane and has it blocked by Anthony Gibson. Not a very good basketball sequence here in the last 30 seconds, but a lot of blocked shots and running up and down the court. That shot no good, but we got a foul called on Corey Martin. That is his second for the Penn Manor Comets. I'll tell you something about Corey Martin. He is really hustling. He is matching quickness with quickness and watch him hit the boards and just aggressively try to get it away as he whacks the tornado upside the head, sending, who is that going to the foul line? I'm blocked by our vantage Curtis point. Curtis Swinton. Swinton is in the game, okay. Swinton, one of the few McCaskey players over six foot tall. And how about the young man just checking into the lineup? Robert Rosa, he is under 5'4 for McCaskey. So they get smaller. Boy, McCaskey having all kinds of trouble from the foul line. That's one thing they're going to have to work on. Swinton miss missing both trips, but doesn't hurt as bad when you're enjoying a 22-9 lead as they are. Shane Rainier into the basketball game for the Comets. Rick Wagner handling the basketball in the right wing. Down low to Steigelman, back out to Wagner, a three-point shot off the front of the rim. Can't get the friendly roll. Mark Keller, the rebound. Out to Gibson. Has it blocked from behind and gets called for an offensive foul as Shane Rainier hits the deck. What do you think? Number 20, Shane Rainier, appeared to have his position established. And Gibson crashes into him, and that's three on Anthony Gibson. So Coach Bird has to get creative now as both Gibson and Johnson in foul trouble. What's going on here? 
There's a whistle and co uh, referee or official Dissinger is talking things over. Uh, an official's timeout or a, a Penn Manor timeout, I believe. A Penn Manor timeout. John Ayersman wanting to talk things over and he's looking up at the scoreboard and I'm not sure. You're looking at a 13-point deficit, but to me, Penn Manor has been in it. If they eliminate some of the turnovers, this is a much closer basketball game because McCaskey has missed, A, a number of free throws and has not been able to convert on a lot of shots. They've had a lot of offensive boards getting them second, third, and fourth opportunities at the basket, and that, in my opinion, is the difference in the ball game right now. No question about it. You cannot continue to turn the ball over and give McCaskey these uh, extra opportunities and expect to come away on the plus side. At Penn Manor, as you can see, a down right now by 13. And a good part of uh, this first half, all of this quarter and even part of the first quarter, with Jerry Johnson, their leading scorer on the year, on the bench uh, with a bit of foul trouble. McCaskey coming into this game in league games only in their three Lancaster Lebanon League contest, averaging 78 points per game. And look what they give up. Their defense is under 50. Another turnover, a nice no-look pass. Good, fast break. Perry Patterson can't finish the layup. Gets the loose ball back, and now it comes up. Kyle Bear on the run for the Comets the other way. He loses a handle on it, saves it, but he had stepped out of bounds. McCaskey basketball. Ball handling has not been a highlight of this contest to this point. Well, the tempo is in overdrive for both of these teams, which, of course, Coach Powell and McCaskey just loves. Sean Alston coming into the basketball game for McCaskey. It's Rosa, Tyron McFadden, Alston, Keller, and Curtis Swinton, who's got the basketball now. Fadden setting up the offense now out near midcourt. Rosa driving, the little man goes in, lays it off the glass, and it's good. His first two points of the game, and it's a 24-9 McCaskey lead. McCaskey's version of Muggsy Bogues out there, and he is quick. Wagner, a three-point attempt, it's good. He finally knocks that one down. He's had a couple of looks at that. His first points of the game, and that cuts the lead to 12. Keller, a three-point shot off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound comes down to Rick Wagner. Martin running it up. We get a foul called. Robert Rosa, his first. Seventh team foul. And that should be a one-and-one -one opportunity for Penn Manor. Corey Martin steps to the free throw line with a one-and-one -one opportunity. Knocks down the front end, so he'll get one more. First points on the night for the junior guard, but he really has been working hard. Impressive with his hustle is number 23. Here's his opportunity for a second point, and he's got it. That's Penn Manor's fourth free throw attempt in this half. And John Ayersman said before the game, they do not go to the free throw line a whole lot, so they have to win with the field goals. So far, he is true to his word. Rosa goes through, blocked from behind. Wagner comes up with a loose ball, gets a block shot on Sean Alston. Steigelman, the big man on the run, saves it. And back out to Wagner. He's left open for another three. It's off right. Hustling for the loose ball, and it knocks it out of bounds. But I'm sure John Ayersman not going to argue with a guy who would take a shot, follow it, and then hustling after the ball and knock it out of bounds. That's good hustle. Under three minutes to play here in the first half. McCaskey with a 10-point lead. Rosa thought about a three-pointer. Finds Swinton penetrating and a pass intended for Sean Alston. Didn't get it to anybody as it goes out of bounds. Pin Manor basketball. Good news for Alston is his face wasn't in the way. That baby was smoked. McCaskey gets another turnover with a hand on a pass. And now McFadden will set off the offense. It always seems like there's a hand in the passing lane, doesn't it? Rosa drives the dish outside. 
Gets his man up, tries to come down the lane. Nearly a travel or a walk. No call whatsoever. And we got a foul the other way. Foul called on Sean Alston. His first, and that will send Rick Wagner to the line. Play is a little ragged here in the second part of this first half. And there you see some of the ragged play under the basket as Jerry Johnson and Tyson McFadden check back in for Coach Powell, trying to restore a little order out there, I guess. 2.18 left here in the first half. Wagner goes to the line, shooting one and one, trying to cut into the double-digit deficit. Knocks down the front end. Bobby Eberhardt coming back into the game for Sean Alston. Second free throw by Wagner is good. Where they don't go to the line much, but they're pretty solid. Five of six as a team on the night, and it's 24-16 McCaskey. Jerry Johnson out on the right wing, down to Tyson McFadden, goes up strong underneath and almost gets it to go. That's been his bread and butter tonight, going strong to the basket and getting to finish. First time tonight, he's not finished. A foul called on Shane right here, his first. Well, McFadden has eight points, all of them in the first quarter, and all this way, look at him. He goes strong to the basket after a quick first step, and he's been drawing a lot of contact, and he's back out at the foul line where he is two for four, make it two for five. McCaskey has not been doing very well from the free throw line. In fact, they've only made two out of two, four, six, eight, ten. I've got them two for ten, Ken. Can that be right? 20% from the free throw line. McCaskey controls the basketball after it was tipped out of bounds. Jerry Johnson guarded closely by Ron Wagner into the basketball game for the Comets. Can't get the shot to fall. Rebound finally pulled down by Rick Wagner. Both Wagners on the floor right now. The brothers for the Comets. A three-point shot? No, it's no good. Rebound to Curtis Swinton. Three-point basket by Jerry Johnson. Can't get it to go. You talk about hands in a passing lane, even on a rebound and an outlet pass. McCaskey is somewhere defending that pass. And most coaches will tell you their offense feeds off the defense, and you can see that's the case with McCaskey. They are really not shooting ball that well tonight at all, but their defense is creating so many opportunities for them. It's got them uh, on top by eight. Another turnover. 24-16 and not the most well-played game to this point in the contest. Johnson out front, drives baseline, jump shot, fouled from behind. Foul on Ron Wagner, his first, and Johnson will go to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Fouled in the act of shooting. Hey, you can see the move that gets around Wagner and then Ron reaches in, gets ball, but a lot of a lot of body on uh, Jerry Johnson, who will, as Ken said, try to improve this 20% free throw night, and he does. <laughs> Jerry Johnson, second free throw is good. Two for two at the line, six points on the night for Johnson. And it is again a 10-point McCaskey lead. McCaskey relentless with the press. 10-manner breaks this time. Can't convert the shot. A long rebound comes down, controlled by Corey Martin. Martin underneath has a block, controls out to Rick Wagner. The three-point shot, no good. Long pass down to Tyson McFadden. He converts, not a very smart foul that time. Rick Wagner hustling back on the defense, commits his second foul of the night. In the playgrounds, you used to call this peepee -pee hanging, but hanging way back on that particular play was Tyson McFadden, and once again, he is at the foul line where he's had a very tough night. He is two for seven. 
improving somewhat, converts the three-point opportunity, and it's a 13-point lead for McCaskey with 42 seconds left here in the first half. Good cross-court pass to get it across the timeline and break the McCaskey press. Steigelman turns it over. Loose ball to Tyson McFadden, and he converts again. 13 points on the night. Five here in the second quarter for Tyson McFadden. Jump shot in the lane. Kyle Bear no good. Rebound Steigelman puts it right back up. He can't convert. Loose ball on the floor. We've got a jump ball, the arrow favoring the Red Tornado. And who comes up out of the middle of that mix but Tyson McFadden. Five seconds left. Looking for a shot, Jerry Johnson. Under a second, did he get it off? Yes, is it good? No. Into the first half and the McCaskey Red Tornadoes, 31. Penn Manor, 16 at halftime. We'll be right back in just a moment. <laughs> halftime here at McCaskey High School. And a pretty good crowd on hand for this Friday evening contest in Section 1 of the Lancaster Lebanon League. Penn Manor trailing McCaskey right now by 15, a score of 31 to 16, and really not the... I, I'm trying to find a, a nice way to put this. It's been a rather sloppy contest at this point. A number of turnovers. The McCaskey press has been absolutely relentless on Penn Manor's offense. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, McCaskey plays this kind of game. I mean, they are they pressed from the opening bell. They never took it off. They've got a hand in your face, a hand in the passing lane, and it tends to make for high up-tempo, sloppy play. I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of rugged play going on when you're playing McCaskey, uh, but Bird Powell likes that because it usually results in a McCaskey W. It's resulted in seven of them so far this year, and as we've already stated, they're up by 15 right here at halftime, 31 to 16, and, and you uh, re really summarized the first half, the McCaskey press and the Penn Manor turnovers. Yeah, it really has been a difficult contest for the Comets, and you really, you've got to think that in the locker room, John Ayersman said it's pretty simple. If they don't turn the ball over, do a better job of breaking the press, they're right back in this game. Other than those two aspects of this contest, they're playing pretty even. And, and those two aspects, to think that that could get McCaskey a 15-point lead is, is pretty amazing. But John Ayersman obviously didn't say a whole lot to his club because they're already back out. Warming up for the second half. We've still got six minutes left on the clock running down here in the halftime clock. So I think it was pretty simple. He went to the locker room and said, guys, look, do these two things, and we're right back in it. And this team knows they can get back in because they were down large to Hempfield and fought back and got that game back within four. So he knows he's got a team that can come back. Whether or not they can control the basketball will be a big factor in that. We'll take a look at some of the leading scores from the first half of action for uh, McCaskey. Certainly a lot more scoring than what you saw for Penn Manor. Tyson McFadden has been the workhorse for them, 13 points. Bobby Eberhardt and Jerry Johnson with six apiece, but McFadden has been all over the place, coming up with a couple of loose balls on defense. But boy, Bill, in that first quarter, his bread and butter was going to the hole strong and finishing the shot. He got a number of three-point opportunities early. But the one thing that he did not do very well, and, and, and in fact, the whole McCaskey team struggled from the free throw line. Unofficially, I've got them five for 13 from the free throw line, and McFadden has three of them, but he also missed a bunch. Take another look at number 22, Tyson McFadden, off the feed from Jerry Johnson. Uh, actually, that's Bobby Eberhardt with a little jump hook from uh, out front. Bobby Eberhardt, number 20, scoring one of his three buckets. And uh, you saw on the graphic earlier that Eberhardt uh, is second in scoring with six points along with Jerry Johnson. But free throw shooting about the only thing that the Tornado have not done very well so far tonight. On the other hand, the Comets shooting very well. They're five for six from the free throw line. Just not getting an opportunity to shoot the ball all that much because they're turning it over so often. It seems like as soon as they get it down the court, somebody from McCaskey's got a hand in the passing lane. The baskets that they have got, Rick Wagner has a, a three-point basket to give him five on the night. Brad Steigelman has showed a couple of nice, soft touches, a turnaround jump shot and a one-handed shot in the lane. 
they haven't been able to get the ball down to him that much. He's got four, and Anthony Reynolds has three points on the night. And I think one of the things that perhaps John Ayersman said in the locker room for his guys is that they need to work on getting the ball controlled up the court and then find Steigelman down in the post because he's obviously bigger than anybody McCaskey can put out on the floor. And I think Coach Ayersman would like to exploit that a little bit and get that used down in the post. But right now he's having a hard time just getting the basketball up the floor to try and set something up on offense. The Comets trailing McCaskey right now by 15. 31 to 16, your halftime score. In just a few moments, we will have second half action live from McCaskey High School. We'll be back in just a moment here on TSN. We are all set to go here for second half action. From McCaskey High School, Ken Phelps and Bill Arnold with you on TSM Sports, bringing you coverage of the 1999 high school basketball season. And Penn Manor gets the basketball to start the second half. Corey Martin out top. The jump shot. Can't get it to fall. Rebound to Rick Wagner. Goes right back up. One-handed shot. Can't get it to go. One positive they got there they didn't get for a good portion of the game was an extra shot. You see the hustle by Anthony Reynolds there but it is still McCaskey basketball. Here in a little catch-22, if you're Penn Manor, you have to play an up-tempo game to catch up, but if you play that up-tempo game, you play right into McCaskey's hands. So what do you do? Here's Jerry Johnson. Johnson for three, and he knocks it down. That is his first three-point basket of the night. He's got nine so far in the game. 7.26 left, just underway here in the second half. Remember, Jerry Johnson, as you get another look at that three, is a great shooter. He's had foul trouble in this game, uh, just not as sharp as I've seen him, but he might be warming up, and that's more bad news for the Comets. Largest lead of the game for McCaskey. They are up by 18. Penn Manor trying to get an open look and are not able to do it. Reynolds driving, had it nearly stolen, but Penn Manor gets it back. Jump shot outside by Steigelman, no good. Rebound Reynolds, saves it to Steigelman. Nice play that time by the Comets. Corey Martin trying to drive, pull up. 15-footer, no good. Rebound to Steigelman. And he's going to get called for the walk. Moved his feet on the ground, 6.43 left in the third, and Steigelman turns the ball over for Penn Manor. Well, that time they got two extra shots, Ken, and you see some of the hard work under the boards, and now the, the slip slide by Steigelman. But uh, they seem to be hustling on that offensive board a little bit more. Uh-oh, Jerry Johnson's warming up. In the first minute and a half of the third quarter, he's got as many points as he did the entire first half. A couple of three-point baskets for Johnson, and that could mean big trouble for the Comets. Shot was blocked by Perry Patterson, but he gets called for the foul. That is his first in the basketball game. Take another look at Patterson coming over to help out in a very obvious foul, and then Ball and Perry right into our cameraman's lap. Good work by the TSM camera crew. Doug Miller on the ball. Shot by Martin is good. A perfect three for three from the line so far tonight for Corey Martin. This team can shoot foul shots, huh? They just need to get to the line a little more often. Seven of eight tonight as Martin is good on both of them. Red Tornado up by 19, just over six minutes left in the third. Tyron McFadden trying to create something out top now. Tyson McFadden looks down low. They go outside to Patterson now. Foul on the floor, so the shot is waved off. Penn Manor foul called on Corey Martin. That is his third. Perry Patterson for a big man. He's very, very smooth. Got great ball handling ability. Drew the foul that time. And Martin, the quickest Comet now in foul trouble with three. Bobby Everhart right down the lane and off the glass. First points of the half for Bobby Everhart. He's got eight tonight. Getting a little ugly right now, Kenny. Still with 5.45 left in the third quarter. Reynolds can't knock the shot down. Rebound 
Almost nobody going after it. Finally, McCaskey controls. And an easy basket up and in again. Bobby Everhart, two quick field goals, and he's in double digits tonight. Here in the first two and a half minutes, Ken McCaskey's outscored the Comets 10 to 2 in this third quarter. Three point shot, no good. Rebound off Penn Manor McCaskey basketball. This is not how John Arisman wanted to come out and open the second half. Tyron McFadden will walk it up for the Red Tornado. Good defense by Corey Martin strips it away, but McFadden back up with it. Down low. Perry Patterson gets the easy basket off the pass. 43 to 18, a 25 point lead for the Red Tornado, and they led by 15 at the half. They've outscored Penn Manor by 10 points here in less than four minutes. And Penn Manor just cannot find the range. And there goes Jerry Johnson towards the other end. The layup is good. Johnson, eight points here in the third quarter. 14 in the game. Timeout by the Red Tornado. A 20-second timeout by Steve Powell's club. And I tell you what, it has just uh, gone from bad to worse for Penn Manor. Watch this move by Bobby Everhart and then the feed to Perry Patterson. Perry finishes it off. And McCaskey has just been completely taking control uh, here in this third quarter. They were in pretty good shape at halftime, up 31 to 16, but the lead has quickly jumped to 27 points, and we're not even halfway through this period. All tornado here, Ken. You saw on that replay of that baseline pass by Eberhardt, got Steigelman to commit and put the bounce pass right behind him to Perry Patterson. The one thing that Penn Manor is doing is Reynolds gets the shot to fall. I asked John Ayersman throughout the game and Penn Manor getting a turnover. Asked him if they got more of their points off passes. Getting a guy open for a good shot. And he said absolutely. They have not done that here tonight. Most of the opportunities that they have had have been dribble drives. Steigelman, his third field goal of the game. Six points tonight for the Comets. Cuts the lead to 23. Nice, low, good, no look pass. And guess who's going back to the line? Number 22, Tyson McFadden, as he continues to work real, real hard under the offensive glass. Two shots. McFadden has made his living tonight in the low post. Either setting up down there or driving to the basket as he knocks down the front end of this trip to the free throw line. There's a good look at first year coach John Ayersman, who by the way, spent some time in the McCaskey, or actually in the Lancaster City coaching district. He did some coaching at Wheatland Junior High. So he might not be uh, all that unfamiliar with some of these players. Martin, the jump shot off the front of the rim, no good. That pass high and just off the fingertips of Bobby Everhart as he was headed down court. 324 left in the third and the Comets, all they can do is try and play catch up and McCaskey is not giving them any opportunities. The next time we see McCaskey, and I, when I say we, I mean the Tri-State Media crew, we will see them a week from Tuesday right back here against Hempfield. What a game that ought to be. Kesky does have to travel over to Neffsville and meet Township on the road in one week. That won't be easy. Anthony Reynolds looking for some help, not finding much. And they go down low now, Kyle Bear. And he'll get fouled, and I believe the foul will be on Tyson McFadden. They're going to call that on Perry Patterson. That's his second. Second team foul here in the second half. Well, Perry was beaten there, and he just reached around and grabbed, but another turnover. Yeah. 
Anthony Gibson, his first points of the night off the lay-in. And it has been all McCaskey in this contest. They lead by 26. Anthony Reynolds looking to drive, pull up jump shot, has it blocked. Steigelman pulls up the loose ball. He was too far underneath. Reynolds off the glass and gets it to roll. Anthony Reynolds with seven points in the game, and it's 48-24 McCaskey. Johnson for three. Pulled up right in the face of Anthony Reynolds. I think he's uh, warming up a bit. Had only six at halftime. He now has 17. Another Penn Manor turnover, and there's no foul called on the play. And an easy basket up and in for Bobby Everhart. He has already matched his first half total here in the third quarter. He's got six. Foul call by the officials, Tyson McFadden. Watch Johnson on this jump shot. Just pulls up right in front of Anthony Reynolds. Good form. He was the leading scorer on McCaskey's squad last year, and he was only a sophomore. <laughs> the leading scorer this year and only a junior. So the bad news for LL coaches, he's back again next year. Shane Rainier looking for some help, not finding any. McCaskey comes up with a loose ball, one-handed pass by Patterson. Johnson misses one, he's human. Yeah, that's a news flash here in the second half. You see that one arm pass by Patterson? Can you tell he's a quarterback? Oh, there's a block by Patterson. And this has very quickly turned into a track meet. And boy, does Bobby Everhart know how to finish on the break. I think all four of his buckets, or at least three of the four this quarter, were break finishers. Very strong. Drive down the baseline, nice pass into the lane. That shot blocked by Patterson on Steigel. Steigelman, rather. And there goes Everhart again, and this time he'll get a chance for a three-point opportunity as he's fouled on the drive. Well, Jerry Johnson has 11 points this quarter, and now Everhart has a chance to tie him. Everhart's three-point conversion attempt is good. Seven for 16, Bill, so they're slowly getting that free throw percentage up a little bit. I did a quick, uh, a quick uh, mathematical equation and figured out that McCaskey has scored 27 points and they're going for more. Look at that alley-oop that won't go. 27 in this period, Ken. Tyson McFadden and Jerry Johnson trying to combine on the razzle-dazzle and can't get it to go. Drive down the lane by Penn Manor, no good. Rebound Gibson, outside Johnson. Was gonna pull up for three, couldn't do it. And that, pat, that jump shot rather a little short, but McCaskey an offensive board. Gibson, and he knocks down a three. Anthony Gibson with five points tonight. It's 61-24. Five seconds winding down here in the third quarter. The last second shot is up. No good. And time has run out here in the third period. And you can see it on the face of the Penn Manor Comets. They are tired. McCaskey has literally run them into the ground. Our score at halftime was 31-16. It's now 61-24. McCaskey running them out of the gym 30 to 8 in the third quarter. McCaskey out in front of this one big. We'll be right back for the final eight minutes. Capitals always intense. And this genuine, no one gets you closer to the intensity than HTX. Capitals Hockey, four high-intensity games in January on HTS. 
Fourth quarter action from McCaskey High School. And it has been all red tornadoes in this one. Ken Phelps and Bill Arnold with you on TSM. Continuing coverage of the 1999 basketball season. We've got an exciting schedule for you. Up until this game, all of the games that we've done have been rather close affairs, but this one uh, out of hand in the third quarter. McCaskey scoring almost as many points in the third period as they did in the entire first half. Layup by Martin, no good. Loose ball. Martin came up with it, but he was on the end line, or out of bounds line, rather. They've scored as many points in this uh, third quarter as a lot of NBA teams score. 30 points in the period, holding the Comets to eight. 61-24, your score, 7.43 and counting here in the fourth. Johnson for three, that one's short and well short. Well, I think he's lost that rhythm. Maybe his legs are going out from underneath him a little bit. They've done nothing but press and run in the first three quarters. Three-point basket for Penn Manor, no good. That shot saved by Jerry Johnson. Tyson McFadden bringing it up. Kasky wants a timeout. Jerry Johnson, boy, did he ever get a hot hand in the third quarter. And range doesn't seem to be a problem with Jerry Johnson. He is very confident at 22 feet. He has three three-pointers and all from way out there in that third period. 17 points altogether to join Bobby Everhart in team scoring honors. Looked at the leading scores in the first half. And McCaskey had just one guy in double digits, Tyson McFadden with 13 points. The Red Tornado had two double-digit scorers in the third period alone. 11 apiece for Jerry Johnson and Bobby Everhart. And a contrast in scoring styles you see here is Anthony Gibson, or Bobby Everhart rather, finishing one of his many fast break baskets. And Jerry Johnson had three three-pointers. Not a whole lot that could be done for Penn Manor. Robert Rosa into the game now for the Red Tornado. In fact, uh, Coach Powell has an entire second unit in, but Anthony Gibson is still filling it up. Three-point basket for Gibson. It's now a 40-point lead in the ballgame. Penn Manor looking for a shot and just can't find an open man. The drive down the lane, the extra pass. That shot is blocked. Attempt by Ron Wagner. Down low, Robert Rosa for three. Hard off the rim, no good. Rebound down to Joel Reinier. So down low, and it is turned over again. Rosa's going to take it all the way in and gets the friendly roll from the rim. He's got four points tonight. Three-point basket for Penn Manor, no good. Off the rebound, Corey Martin knocks down the jump shot. Corey Martin has never stopped hustling, even in what is a 40-point shellacking. Corey Martin and many of his teammates have kept on stroking. They're just outmanned tonight. But Coach Ersman getting a program started down there in the Millersville area. And Penn Manor creating a turnover off the hustle by Corey Martin. Tipped the ball away and forced the... Traveling by McCaskey. Under six minutes to play here in the fourth quarter of action. And Corey Martin's a junior also, so I guess Corey and Jerry Johnson will uh, battle it out a few more times in their careers. Curtis Swinton with a blocked shot, tries to get another one in camp. Ron Wagner getting his first points of the game. So much athletic ability on the Red Tornadoes basketball squad. Robert Rose at 5-3. Nice no-look dish. And an easy lay-in for Sean Alston. Alston into the scorebook. There are nine Red Tornadoes in the scoring column tonight. Here comes McCaskey on the run again. Loose ball controlled by the Red Tornado. Anthony Gibson, a three-point shot from way out. Hit rim, but couldn't get it to go. Rebound pulled down by Penn Manor, and a bad pass. Oh, 
Maybe the collective groan of the crowd. I think a lot of people thought Sean Austin was going to go up for a dunk, and he lost the handle on the basketball as he tried to get up. I think Sean Austin might have thought he was going up for a dunk and just couldn't quite get the handle. Well, a couple of new faces checking into the lineup for McCaskey. Joe Wysock and Herminio Ortiz into the basketball game. And we've got a whistle. And Penn Manor's got six comets on the court. <laughs> trying to figure out which one is not supposed to be into the basketball game. Well, that's an idea if it'll work. <laughs> Slip an extra guy in there. <laughs> Sure, this will be a night John Ayersman will look back and, and want to forget things not going Penn Manor's way, that's for sure. A three-point basket. Missed everything. The shot by Shane Rainier. Mark Keller into the game. Robert Rose on the white, right wing now. A little inside-outside contest here for McCaskey. Bad shot by Rosa. I think he said he was looking for a pass. Joe Weissock into the scoring column. That is double-digit scorers for McCaskey. Ten guys in the scoring column. Joel Reinier looking for Corey Martin in the corner. The three-point jump shot. No good off the front of the rim. Rebound down to Rick Wagner. He gets a shot up and can't get it to roll. The iron unkind tonight to the Penn Manor Comets. Three opportunities that time and can't get a shot to drop before the foul is called. First foul on Joe Wysock. For Herminio Ortiz, 50 called for the foul. You see Penn Manor continuing to battle on those offensive boards. They have really improved in that effort as the game has gone on. And it uh, finally gives the opportunity to Brad Steigelman. And uh, it's his first trip to the free throw line and one of the few Comets to miss a foul shot tonight. Anthony Reynolds, the only other Penn Manor Comet unsuccessful in a trip to the free throw line. And he made one of two that trip. You know, we've talked about a lot of things, but I don't know if we've talked enough about McCaskey's great defense in this game. They've held a, an improving Penn Manor team to 28 points in the game. That's great defense. A lot of it on turnovers, but just good solid D all night long by the Tornado. Playing inside, outside. Nice look that time by Brad Steigelman, but Kyle Bear not ready for the pass. Mark Keller on the fast break. Make that 11 red Tornadoes in the scoring column. Arminio Ortiz and Curtis Swinton, the only guys who have played tonight that have not gotten into the scoring column. Rosa picked the Comets pocket, but McCaskey turns it over at the other end. Play kind of ragged here as the Tornado, especially with second teamers and third teamers in there. Only a two-point basket that time by Andy Quinn. Toe on the line. It's 72 to 30. Wysock turns the ball over down low. Two and a half minutes left in this contest. Ken Phelps and Bill Arnold with you. It has been all McCaskey. They go down low. Steigelman gets his man up. The basket waved off. Foul call on the floor. Second foul on Herminio Ortiz. Steigelman got his man up but was not in the act of shooting. Three-point shot no good that time by Andy Quinn. Nice steal that time by Rick Wagner. With a foul called on Robert Rosa going for the loose ball. Well, there's a good look at rookie coach Sharesman, who uh, I'm sure will see better nights for his comments. Frustrating trip here to Reservoir Avenue as the McCaskey Red Tornado will win their eighth game of the year and they will remain unbeaten in Section 1 of the LL League. 
Down low to Steigelman, outside to Bear. And Manor unable to control it and get a shot off. And they go out long to Mark Keller. Keller going fouled on the play. Layup is no good. Kyle Bear called for the foul. Okay, so a good look at the fourth foul on the night for Kyle Bear as he gets Mark Keller, as uh, Ken mentioned early in the game, but if you're joining us late, Mark Keller is the starting quarterback for the McCaskey football team this year. Perry Patterson, his backup, is also a member of the Tornado basketball squad. Keller one for two in that trip, three points tonight. Mark Federoff with the basketball out front into the game for John Aresman's club. Good defense that time by Robert Rosa. It's off the foot of Sean Alston and it is Penn Manor basketball. Spin move down low. Now top two. Dan Hur. Turnaround jump shot by Steigelman is good. He had one like that earlier in the game. He's got eight points on the night. Keller way out for three, and it's good. Six points for the Red Tornado quarterback. Here on the outlet run, Robert Rosa. The little guy goes up off the glass, and it's good. Robert Rosso with six points tonight. Under 30 seconds to play now. Kick it out, three-point basket. Off the rim, no good. Rebound her. And turn around jumper. Can't get it to go. Another opportunity for Penn Manor. And again, a missed shot and missed opportunities. The key to the game tonight. And a tough break for Sean Alston. Comes up with a loose ball. He can't keep his feet and gets called for the travel. Seventeen seconds left in this ball game, and McCaskey owning a 78 to 32 lead, and will have won their fifth straight contest. <laughs> Quinn with a two-pointer. He's got four tonight, all coming here in the fourth quarter. Keller again for three. Rims in and out as time runs out. The McCaskey Red Tornado getting a big win here tonight on their home floor, 78 to 34. Boy, it was not pretty for the Penn Manor Comets. We'll take a quick break. We will wrap things up here in just a moment from McCaskey High School, the Red Tornado 78, the Comets 34. We'll be right back. Final score tonight here at McCaskey High School. The Red Tornadoes owning this one, 78 to 34. And Bill, I guess you could say the, the theme in tonight's ball game was pressure defense and turnovers. And unfortunately for Penn Manor, both categories in favor of McCaskey in a big way. Well, McCaskey uh, doing just about everything right, especially in that third quarter. That's when they blew the game open. It was a 15 point halftime lead, but uh, I've seen many a basketball game turn around in a third quarter. We saw Mannheim Township come back from down 13 at the end of the third quarter to tie that game and take it into overtime. So it was very possible, unfortunately, McCaskey just were relentless in the second half. Oh, that third quarter was incredible. They outscored the Comets 30 to eight, led by Eberhardt and his fast break points and Jerry Johnson from the outside. And they are, they're the two young men that ended up leading the tornado in scoring, Kenny. Just uh, a very impressive effort by by Coach Powell and the Red Tornadoes to win their eighth overall this year. Well, we had mentioned in the pregame the possibility maybe they were overlooking Penn Manor a little bit with the games with Warwick and Township and Hempfield coming up. That's certainly not the case tonight. Eleven guys from McCaskey get into the scoring column tonight. That is, that is impressive, not only that they have that many guys that can 
get on the board, but they just had that much of an opportunity to shuffle guys in, get some of these guys some game experience. And when they come down towards the run for section championship and league titles and district playoffs, they've got a number of guys who have got experience, and I'm sure that only bodes well for Steve Powell's club. You know, we talked about turnovers earlier. That big uh, holiday tournament win over Parkland, they caused the Allentown area team to turn it over 27 times. We do not have a, a stat on the turnovers, but I'm sure if we had it, they made a run at that same number tonight. Penn Manor having all kinds of difficulty against the McCaskey pressure. And a lot of other LL League teams are going to be facing it as the next several weeks unfold. It's not pretty. Well, we got three double-digit scores tonight for the Red Tornado. Jerry Johnson and Bobby Eberhardt lead it with 17. Tyson McFadden with 14. All 14 of his points came in the first three quarters. He did not score in the fourth. Leading scores for Penn Manor, nobody in double digits. Anthony Reynolds had seven points on the night. Corey Martin with six. And uh, Brad Steigelman, correction, led the scores for the Comets. He had eight points tonight in the 78-34 victory for the McCaskey Red Tornadoes. Our next contest coming up this Tuesday at Lancaster Catholic High School, the Elko girls taking on the Lady Crusaders in what should be a very good matchup. The battle for perhaps one of the top spots in Section 3 of the Lancaster Lebanon League. That should be a very good contest. A lot of talent on the floor in that contest. And then one week from tonight, we are at Lancaster Catholic for the contest between the Crusaders and the defending 2A state champs, the Anvil Cleona, Little Dutchman. So that should be a lot of fun. Well, it was a, an exciting, pressure-filled game tonight here at McCaskey High School, and the Red Tornado run away with it. 78-34, to 34, the final score. For Bill Arnold and the rest of our TSM sports crew, I'm Ken Phelps. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you Tuesday night from Lancaster Catholic High School for Elko and Lancaster Catholic in the girls' matchup. So long, everybody.